Hey, I hope you're doing well. The recent months have seen an explosion of AI tools. There is no longer any doubt these will radically change our society. When it comes to knowledge directly and freely accessible by all, as much as personal health, ChatGPT, OpenAI's chatbot has been groundbreaking. Indeed, it is now leading this frantic trend. But for how long? For now, Google, the giant, has released their own chatbot, Bard. So today, let's answer one simple question. Which one is the best for creating trading strategies? I am starting with ChatGPT. As you can see, my plan is pretty simple. I'm going to ask for one single question to both ChatGPT and Bard. Can you code an MACD trading strategy in PineScript that works well for Bitcoin so I can backtest it on TradingView? Why this choice? Three reasons. First, like this, we can compare how they do on the same basis. Second, I am making the strategy a bit specific so we can judge how they handle that. Lastly, I want to be able to backtest the strategy straight away because this is the first key step in judging a trading strategy. Okay, so what did ChatGPT give us? I can see that he went for the standard values of the MACD. Great. Then he computes the MACD line and signal line by hand. Cool. Okay. I see that the buy and sell signals are pretty textbook. So the buy signal will be taken when there's a sign of an uptrend. This is to say when the MACD line crosses over the signal line and the opposite for the sell. And finally, he wrote neatly the piece of code that does the entry and exits of the positions. So let's copy and test it right away. So I'm going to come here, paste it, save so it compiles, then add it to the chart. Okay, all in green, that's a good sign. There is, however, something that he didn't handle properly, and that's in the strategy header here. So let me fetch the correct one in the previous strategy, and then I'll explain why I'm doing that. So here, basically, I'm adding two very important things. The first is that because we're not trading stocks, but we're trading a currency, cryptocurrencies, we have to say how many percent of the total portfolio we are allowed to engage in each trades. So here I'm giving it 100%. This would be the same, for example, when trading Forex. Then the second thing is to add trading fees. Forgetting something like that is the best way of overestimating your strategy. So I would always recommend backtesting with trading fees. By the way, if you want to trade with some discounts on your trading fees, our sign up link down below in the description will give you a 10% discount for life on KuCoin. Okay, so let's save and see how this updates the results. Awesome. We can see that it has increased significantly the profits. This kind of makes sense because now we're using the full portfolio. However, the win rate is quite low and the maximum drawdown is very high. Well, let's ask for an improvement. Can you improve the win rate and maximum drawdown by adding another indicator? Oh, great. He's going for the RSI. This is one of my favorite indicators. Okay, so let's copy and see how this changes our results. Come here, saving. Oh, we just have one trade. So what's going on? Since we have just one closed trade, that means probably the buy signal is way too stringent. Oh yes, indeed. The chances of having this crossover with this RSI conditions are quite low. I want to do it differently. Let's do the opposite. I actually want to enter the trade only when the RSI is overbought. That means we only go for a trade when the momentum is very strong. But then the chances of this crossover happening exactly when this is true are quite slim. So I think what we should do is remove the crossover and just say when both conditions are met, you're allowed to enter the trade. So let's save and see what we get. Nice, we're back to having a good number of trades, some nice profits. A win rate now larger than 50%, I like that. And a maximum drawdown lower, but still quite high. I think we could also completely forget actually about this exit. I think it's probably exiting the trades a bit too randomly because of that. So let me now save and we can check again. Nice. We have almost 600% profits, a very nice healthy growing curve with a low maximum drawdown of 17% and a win rate of almost 60%. It's true, however, that this is a slow trading strategy, more of a long-term plan if you want. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, don't be stingy with that like button. It takes a few seconds for you, but does a world for me. Consider subscribing too. Thanks a lot. I don't know about you, but I would say overall, this was a success. It is true, though, that I've had some practice with ChatGPT and I'm getting used to its mistakes. I've already made a few videos on how to create a trading strategy with it. By the way, please remember that I'm not a financial advisor and trading is risky. Anyways, time to move to BARD.
Oh, I see that Bard went for version 5 of PineScript while ChatGPT did version 4. And therefore, Bard doesn't do the computation of the MACD by hand, but uses this TA library. TA stands for technical analysis, but it also goes for the standard values of the parameters of the MACD. Great. In terms of the signals, we can see that he is going for longs and shorts. But if we compare this long with what ChatGPT had chosen, the choice of BARD is quite different. I am not too sure this is going to work in TradingView. I don't think this syntax is correct in PineScript, but we'll see. We also have a plot, and then we have our entries and exit signals. But this, I'm pretty sure, is not going to work at all. The syntax is really wrong. It's not like PineScript. This looks more like a different language. See you all. Anyway, I'm just going to copy and paste the code as is. And if we do get some errors, I'll feed them to BARD so we can see if he can can handle them. Okay, so saving. Error, cannot compile script. Okay, we kind of guessed about that. Let's see what these errors are. No viable alternative at character. Okay, fair enough. This is really not PineScript. So let's simply copy this and see if Bard can solve it by itself. Let's see what he gave us as a suggestion. Well, <laughs> he's giving us exactly the same thing. Okay, well, anyways, what's maybe more troublesome, actually, I don't know if you realize, but we have a long and a short. And here he uses the buy to be the entry of the long. And then he says the sell, he uses the rule for the short. So there is a bit of a logic problem here, because generally what you do is that you treat longs and shorts separately. So you will have an entry for the long, an exit for the long, an entry for the short, and an exit for the short. So in a certain sense here, it's confusing buy, sell, and long and short. I do want to move forward though. I'm curious to know if the rest of the code works or not. So let me simply reuse the syntax we used in the previous code and adapt it. Oh boy, I just realized he didn't even add the strategy header. Well, that's, that's quite serious. So let me fetch it from the previous code as well. There we go. So let's save and see what we get. And that's another error. Invalid assignment can assign a tuple to a variable. And that's indeed what was in red. Well, let's see if he can resolve this error by himself. You are correct. The error message means that you are trying to assign a tuple to a variable. Not you, you, but you, that is not expecting to be a tuple. Hmm. So clearly what's happening is that he's not handling properly this TAMACD function. If we come here, we can do control click. And as you can see in the example here, this function actually returns three things, but he's trying to feed these three things into one variable. This would work in Python, for example, but it doesn't in PineScript. And then the other problem is because he's doing that, then he's using this syntax here, which again, will not work. Overall, I think seeing the mistakes and all of that, it seems that it doesn't know PineScript very well. Okay, well, this was a bit disappointing. I'm not going to battle any further, but to be fair, Bart is still in its experimental phase, so we need to give it time to allow it to get up to speed. On the other hand, if you're interested in knowing what ChatGPT thinks of the future value of Bitcoin, check this video out. Or if you want to know how to create your own free crypto trading bot, that video will help. This was Robot Traders for you. See you in the next one and take care.